I've been using the Poolin EOC05 embroidery machine for a few weeks and I'm ready to give a full-blown review of this machine based on my 20 years of experience with machine embroidery. Is this machine worth the money? Let's find out. Hey folks, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations where I design dolls, plushies, and puppets that you make with your embroidery machine or sewing machine. And unlike some of those TikTokers stitching one design and calling this machine good, you know I'm going to go into a lot more depth, right? I'm known for my brutal honesty, and you're going to see that in this video. Poolin reached out to me and asked if they could send me their embroidery machine in exchange for a few videos, and I was skeptical. I've seen these machines on Amazon and Timu, and I wondered how well they stitched compared to the more established brands. So I told their representative that I had to give a completely honest review, and were they confident enough in their machine's quality? And she said, absolutely yes. So I was like, okay, let's do this. I think my audience is just as curious as I am about a new brand entering the machine embroidery market, especially since their price point is much lower than the competition. And hopefully you find this review interesting or at least maybe find some humor in it. First of all, Poolin is the home embroidery machine brand of a company called Rich Word, and they also sell multi-needle machines under the brand name Buy, I think that's how you say it, which has been out for a few years in the American markets. Poolin has two models for home use right now. You can find these on Amazon, on Timu, on AliExpress, and on the Rich Word website. There's the EOC05 with a 4x9 inch embroidery area, which is the one I'm reviewing. And they also have the EOC06, which has a much larger 8x11 inch embroidery field. And I want to address the elephant in the room, okay? These machines are not exclusive to Poolin. They are what's called white label, meaning anybody with enough money can buy them and resell them. And that's not unusual in the machine embroidery market. Baby Lock has been selling Brother Embroidery Machines and Janome sewing machines for years, and there are other brands that do that too. And the EOC05 looks very similar to another older brand, but I'm not going to make any guesses on that. However, I think you're going to notice a difference in the customer service and support with Poolin. They have a Facebook group for tech support, and they'll also get on a video chat with you for one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting if you need that. They are really trying to impress the Western markets with their customer service, and lots of us feel they're doing a good job with that. I'm basing that off of the couple of weeks I've been watching their Facebook group. As far as the specs on this machine, here are just the facts, ma'am. It's got a 7-inch color LCD screen, which is really big for this price point. It has 96 built-in designs, 8 different lettering fonts to personalize things with, and 11 languages for the menu. They also have a website with even more free designs you can download, and they're adding new ones all the time. And of course, you can purchase your own designs from anywhere on the internet, and this machine can stitch those too. Or you can get some digitizing software to create custom designs, but that is far outside the scope of this video. This machine has a 4 by 4 inch or 100 millimeter square hoop, and also a 4 by 9 inch or 100 by 230 millimeter hoop. And when I saw this machine a few years ago, I assumed it was a repositionable hoop. In other words, I assumed it was a 4x4 embroidery area, and the 4x9, you had to like shift it to do the other side of the hoop. But it's actually a 4x9 embroidery field, and that impressed me. That size is good for things like borders or bigger monograms or even in the hoop projects. But not many digitizers are creating designs for 4x9 hoops yet. If you're brand new to machine embroidery, please understand that this machine can only do designs that are 4 by 9 inches or smaller. You can't purchase larger hoops. Even if they fit the machine, the embroidery arm is not big enough to stitch anything bigger than the 4 by 9 area. A lot of people make that mistake, so don't let yourself be one of those. The machine comes with six cones of thread, a set of pre-wound bobbins, extra needles, and even a small thread stand, which I think is great. I'm a huge fan of thread stands, and this one comes included. Plus, you get a whole pack of tearaway stabilizer, you get a bag of tools, including the USB stick that allows you to get designs from anywhere on the internet and stitch them on this machine. Unlike most home embroidery machines, this one uses the DST file format which is good because pretty much every digitizer provides DST format when they sell designs. It's used by the Tajima commercial machines and it's been around forever. You could also use the DSB format, but 
There's no color information in DST or DSB files, so the design is going to look weird on your machine's LCD. You can configure the colors in the menu if you want to, and some of you won't care about those colors, but if you have been using a more expensive machine that has a big color palette, the DST files with weird colors might really bother you. The absolutely best feature of this machine, which Poulin failed to mention anywhere, is that it cuts jump stitches. If you've watched my guide on buying an embroidery machine, I urge home embroiderers to look for that feature because it's a huge time saver. And this Poulin EOC05 will cut jump stitches as short as five millimeters, but they never mention that as a feature. So Poulin, please add that as a selling point because you're selling yourself short, not advertising one of your best features. And this machine does have a metal frame inside. Some of the cheaper sewing machines you buy on Amazon have plastic frames, which will warp over time and it ruins the inner workings. But this one is on a metal frame. I've got the side cover off trying to show that inside there. So I've told you the specs of the machine and also some of my initial impressions, but let me tell you some of the bad stuff that happened while I was stitching with the Poulin. They sent me a machine and it was working great. I didn't like the bobbin that came preloaded, but once I changed that out, I was really impressed with the Poulin. I love the cute little bunny on the LCD menu, and it was cutting jump stitches, and I was in love. And then the machine just powered itself off for no reason. Ironically, it happened while I was filming a different video, and you can see my surprise here as I'm talking to the camera as if you're in the room with me, because that's what YouTubers do. But the machine wouldn't power back up. So Poulin told me to send it back and they sent me a second machine and this took less than a week. It was super easy. They sent it, uh, they sent FedEx to my door, but I missed them. So I dropped the machine off at Walgreens drugstore down the street because they have a FedEx drop off. So <laughs> seriously, I just took my embroidery machine to Walgreens, you know, as one does. The second machine didn't work so great. It gave me fits. It had bad tension. It had bird nesting. Basically, all the problems I cover on my popular video on troubleshooting your embroidery machine, except I couldn't fix them. And at this point, I was ready to give the machine back because I couldn't recommend it to you guys in my audience. And I couldn't get it to stitch a design without problems. And nobody wants to watch that video. Or maybe you do. I don't know. But that got me wondering, what happens when your machine needs service? Poulin has videos on how to service the machine yourself, but lots of you will want to take the machine to a dealer for service. And will your local dealer be able to order parts for the Poulin? That's something to consider with any machine you buy. I guess I order stuff from Amazon all the time and it can't be easily repaired and the Poulin has a one year warranty. Sometimes for me, I just buy the extended warranty when I order stuff just in case. That's something to consider. All right, anyway, I was frustrated with the second machine. But I came back another day and I figured out that the machine has a very finicky threading path and the orange plastic piece on my second machine was not in the right place. And that's what started the whole chain of events with thread sensor errors and tension problems and bird nesting. I even used it without the cover on, but that caused even more problems. And then I put the bobbin case in wrong, which got me the dreaded spindle error and the machine would lock up or bird nest under the bobbin case. Oh my gosh. Every time I tried to fix one problem, I was creating another problem. But it's good because all those problems help me create my pool and tips and tricks video. And that way I can help others work through those same issues. So it all ended well, but it wasn't fun when everything was messing up on me. Since the thread path is hidden behind the plastic cover, it's easy to thread it wrong. And it's been a long time since I've had problems like that. But then it's also not fair to, for me to compare an $800 single needle machine to a $10,000 multi needle that I use most of the time. It's like comparing a good apple to a crate of mangoes. Yeah, I love mangoes. Once I got everything working, it's been working great ever since. But seriously, you have to be careful when you thread it. Some machines have a foolproof thread path, but the pooling kind of doesn't. It's easy for the thread to miss the tension disc or get thrown out of the take-up lever and then you get horrible stitches like this eye applique, for example. I've got some samples of good quality stitch outs here at my table. Here's some letters from their alphabets. There's nice tension on this felt and fleece. Here's the piggy you saw at the beginning of the video with very clean edges on these fill stitches. And these cherries are one of the built-in designs. I stitched them with different tension settings when I was playing around. There's even some tension tests just with the letter I. Very easy. 
The Poolin has a manual tension adjustment just like other machines at this price point. And for most machine embroidery, you'll set it around four and you'll never need to mess with it. But if you're doing things like quilting or in the hoop designs, which have a lot of running stitches like a sewing machine would do, then you'll need to increase the tension with that dial. So I've told you about the good and bad experiences I've had with the Poolin EOC05. And let me sum it up with the list of pros and cons, including some things I haven't mentioned yet. So some of the cons are, it's harder to thread properly compared to other machines because the thread path is hidden. It doesn't tell you when the design is finished stitching, which is confusing because you might not know if there's an error or is the design finished. So I appreciate a beep and a message on the screen when the design is finished. It doesn't pause for thread cutting at the beginning of a color. A lot of machines will stitch a little bit and then they'll pause so you can cut the thread tails before they get caught under your stitches. This isn't really a, requ a requirement, but I think it gives a cleaner design. So I was manually stopping the machine because the machine wasn't stopping for me. It's just a nitpicky thing. And like I said, I'm not sure if, if a local dealer can service these machines. That is something to think about. Colors look weird in the DST format it uses, and that's confusing to people. Not many digitizers are creating designs to fit this hoop yet either, so how many 4x9 designs are you going to find out there? We'll have to see. I wish it had a frame out button or something in the menu. This is useful for applique and in the hoop projects where it moves the frame all the way towards you, allowing you to place fabrics. It's not a deal breaker, but I do wish it had that. Another problem I had, and I really hope they fix this in the software, when you're in the menu and skip to a different color, it goes to the end of your chosen color and then stitches the one after that. And if you're new here, that might not make sense to you, but sometimes we need to stitch colors out of order or restitch a color, and that quirk in the menu messed me up several times. It should go to the start of the color I pick and not the end and then stitch the next one. I consider that a software defect, and I really hope they fix it. And some of the pros are, it cuts jump stitches. That is a feature I love and appreciate. I wish they would make that more clear in their listing descriptions because it's a big selling feature for most of us with home embroidery machines. It has both four x four and four x nine hoops and the price at around $800 on Amazon with free shipping. I think it has a lot of features for that price. It has nice stitch quality once you get used to its quirks. It comes with enough supplies for getting through the learning curve before you have to buy your own expensive supplies. I would suggest getting some cutaway stabilizer though, at least while you're learning. And all the supplies it comes with is kind of a big deal because supplies can set you back a couple hundred dollars. It's got a big seven inch LCD with a lot of features for modifying designs with lettering or combining designs. Most machines under a thousand dollars have much smaller screens, but not this one. And it comes with a thread stand. It's nothing fancy, but it does improve your stitch quality when you're using a thread stand. Maybe this is just me, but the machine is cute. I like that little bunny that comes up when you turn on the machine. It's kind of silly, but I like those little extra touches. It gives the machine personality and makes us want to give it a fun name. Now for the bottom line, would I recommend this machine? And that answer is yes, but only for certain people. If you're the DIY or die kind of person like me, if you don't mind getting out a screwdriver and fixing things yourself, and you'd rather save your money and do a little extra work instead, then this machine is a great choice for people that I like to call curious tinkers. If you're in the maker group of people, I'm talking about you. It's also a great choice for people who prefer to learn on their own rather than taking classes at a local dealer. But if you are afraid of machines or you feel like you're not a technical person, if you're the person who can't figure out how your cell phone works, then the Poolin is not the best choice for you. And I know some of my audience are not offended by that, even though you know that I'm talking about you, because some of us Gen X and boomers we might not love this machine so much, but it wasn't built for us. There are plenty of other machines that were built with our generation in mind, just maybe not this pool. And this machine is better for the millennial and Gen Z and even the Gen Alpha. Some of those kids are 13 and 14 years old now, and they could use this machine, no problem. And with any embroidery machine that you buy, you got to know this one thing. Machine embroidery has a learning curve. Everybody thinks you just press a couple buttons and the machine just magically stitches everything for you. But that is not reality. It is your job to learn about different stabilizers, how to hoop properly, how to thread the machine or change to a different needle for different fabrics. The quality of your stitch out is directly related to you learning those things. I do have a free video series for beginners to help with all of that. 
Just be patient with any new embroidery machine. It takes a bit of time. If you decide the Poolin is the machine that you want to buy, please consider using my affiliate links down in the description box. Any Amazon commissions I earn go right back into making more videos for improving this channel. If you think embroidery machines are expensive, you should price video equipment. It's crazy. Including the new microphone I had to buy for this video because my old one just died on me yesterday. It's always something. That's all I got for now. See you later, folks. Oh, look, I have trash behind me in the entire video. Yay. I assumed it was a repositionable. Wow, I messed that up. I ass hmm. I assumed it was repositionable. Re. I assumed it was a repositionable hoop. Okay, I gotta practice that word for a little bit. Re. Poppin. Pep. Unum. Repositionable. Did it.